What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and today I'm going to go over something I'm sure some of you probably already understand, but it's very important to explain to the people that don't understand or might not realize the importance of. Optimizing your gear and character through simulations. Now, many of you probably already look on Wowhead or Icy Veins or Heaven Help You Knock Sick, and they'll have tons of great information and explain your stat priority and recommended talents and all that, but that is being done from a very broad level that just covers a class or spec in general. To really get the most out of your own character, you'll need to dig a little deeper inside yourself. Just, just, don't pull out any organs or anything, that's just gross and unnecessary. If you end up liking the video, feel free to leave a comment, or if you're feeling extra saucy, maybe a like or a sub. Anyways, you might be wondering how to sim your character. If you haven't before and always hear people talking about sims in trade chat or even in your guild, and maybe just didn't want to feel like the odd man out because you had to ask and risk the wrath of the trolls, well, my friend, you better sit tight, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. There are two popular ways you can sim your gear, so I'll mention both, but strongly encourage the usage of one over the other. There is a third option, but we'll, we'll touch upon that. Simulation Craft is basically the software that is used to get all the data you find on websites like Blood Mallet and Hero Damage, and they have their own application you can download so you can sim yourself directly on your own computer. You can sim virtually anyone in the game, as long as you type in their name correctly to the character section and their realm. In case they have like a billion alt codes, this can be an issue because someone stole their name when they server transferred for a little bit to raid and then came back and lost their name. Don't ask how I know about that. Sigh. This data is pulled from the WoW Armory, so it'll only show whatever a person last logged out in. So if your rogue friend logs out in subtlety and you want to look at their outlaw damage, yeah, you won't be able to. Simulation Craft also has an add-on in-game, so instead of typing in your name every time, you can use it and type forward slash simc, and it'll actually pull a script that you can slap into SimCraft, which is pretty nice. However, as cool as the Simulation Craft program sounds, it does have some downsides. If you don't use the add-on, you'll have to log out every time you change any gear if you want to resim yourself, as it has to pull from whatever the WoW Armory is showing as the current gear, and it only does that when you log out. Unless you know how to rewrite the simulation craft strings, which is honestly a bit of a headache to swap out gear, and if you mess any of it up, it'll work about as well as any given patch on the day it comes out, so yeah, not. It can also really bog down your CPU if you're running a high accuracy, long duration sim, even on a good computer. What I'd personally recommend using is raid bots, as it's basically simulation craft but in the cloud, and just better in like every aspect, honestly. If you've heard of Ask Mr. Robot, yeah, that still exists too, and it's similar, but uh, just trust me, you'll probably like Raid Bots better. And that's nothing against the folks at Ask Mr. Robot. It's a good program, but there are just other alternatives. And it honestly seems like Raid Bot is being kept up with a little bit more at this point from just looking at the pages. I will give you a heads up now, though. Raidbots is pretty popular and does usually have a queue when simming things, unless you decide to become a premium member. It's honestly pretty darn cheap monthly though, I think it's like 3 bucks a month to avoid the queue line, if you're as impatient as I am, and then it's totally worth it. It also gives you access to a special simulation method, the Droptimizer, which allows you to sim various types of content to see where your best upgrade would come from but I won't be covering that in this video since I'm pretty sure you have to be a premium member to use it at all. But yeah, Raidbots has a variety of distinct advantages over the Simulation Craft program. For instance, as you can see from this page, you can have it do individual aspects of your character. It also is cloud-based, meaning it has no strain on your CPU at all, so you can have it just running in the background while you're doing your world quests or farming echoes and hoping whatever corruption you're looking for will finally show up from the vendor. Anyways. We'll start with the simple stuff, and we'll work our way through how to use raid bots. We'll start with a simple quick sim. Quick sim is exactly what it sounds like. A quick simulation of how much damage your character can potentially do, and a visual breakdown of all of your moves and the percentage of your total damage that each one does. This can be useful if you're trying to get an idea of what swapping out a single item might do for you, if you're comfortable with the knowledge you have of your character and your gear slash talent loadout. When starting a quick sim, it will ask you to either enter a character name and realm, just like Simulation Craft, or if you have the SimCraft add-on I mentioned, you can simply copy and paste that information into the Load from SimC add-on section. Beneath the Load from SimC add-on box, you'll see a bunch of simulation options. These will allow you to change things like fight style, number of bosses, fight length, and a few other specific things. 
Now, this is probably the most important part of understanding how to use raid bots, picking the correct fight style to what you're trying to simulate. As you can see here, we're currently on patchwork style. For those of you OGs, you'll remember patchwork from Nax Ramas, which was the definition of a tank and spang boss fight, where DPS could basically just hang out, have a good time, and do their rotation. That is basically what the patchwork sim is, so you would primarily use this to see the highest possible single target damage you would do in your current loadout. Another commonly used simulation style, especially if you've been on Blood Mallet, is Hectic Ad Cleave. This one is meant to help emulate a boss fight with multiple waves of adds. To be more accurate, it is a boss fight with waves of 5 adds that last 15 seconds and spawn every 22 seconds. This is to give both AoE and single target sustained damage totals, so it tries to cover both cleave and single target damage in one simulation. There are quite a lot of options in simulation styles beyond these, but my personal preference over Hectic Ad Cleave is Dungeon Slice. Dungeon Slice is a unique simulation mode to raid bots that tries to take a literal chunklet out of a dungeon. It starts with a 2 minute boss fight, a pack of 4 to 6 mobs for 11 to 19 seconds, and a pack of 1 to 3 mobs for 26 to 34 seconds. It will alternate between the two pack styles until the simulation completes, as well as including some time of no damage at all to replicate the approximate amount of time to move between packs of mobs. This is not intended to replicate any specific dungeon, but rather to give a close to realistic approach to how a dungeon would play out in your simulations. Whew, that was a mouthful. Now that all the explanations are out of the way, we can actually get to doing some number crunching. So now we'll choose the sim what we're interested in, and being the cleave junkie that I am, I of course pick Dungeon Slice. So here we can see the simulation of my total damage, and the amount of damage each of my abilities would theoretically do in a dungeon-ish scenario. It will also show you your buff uptime as well, and what buffs are currently affecting you outside of your class abilities. So when you run this, it's basically giving you the best possible scenario, with 10% of every stat buff, good flasks, augment runes, a good food buff, and using lust. So you want to take these numbers with the grain of salt if you're not doing this on your regular pulls. Stat weight sim will do basically the exact same thing, however it will also tell you how much a certain stat will impact your overall damage. These numbers should be used as a rough comparison though, as there is a chance your stat weights are exceptionally volatile, and may change just by adding an enchant or a gem of a certain type. It can give you a good idea of the direction you might want to go in for gear, but is not the definitive answer for most specs. Unless you're like, a fire mage, and then yes, you want a gazillion mastery apparently, I don't know. Talent Compare is a very niche simulation that I frankly never use, but if you really did want to only compare different talent builds, this is what you'd use to do it, since you don't have to worry about accidentally changing any other variables in your simulation. The same kind of goes for Gear Compare, as it allows you to put together multiple sets of gear to see what the changes would be, but it does let you search for pieces of gear you don't even own yet and compare them to what you're wearing, which is a pretty nifty feature, Though, it's kind of like a wishful thinking, like, if I only had X or Y piece of gear, I would do a bajillion damage, so... Cool, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be useful. The option you'll probably use the most, honestly, is Top Gear. And, no, not the show, but I did like the show. This will pull literally every item you have in your bags and on your character, and allow you to select and toggle literally everything about them. It's nuts. What enchants you have. What gems you have. What Azurite traits you want what talent combination you're using, what Azerite essences you have on, what corruptions you have on, and if you wanted them purified, what corruptions you want to add to your gear, how much corruption you want to wear, what sockets you want to add to your gear. It's insane. The level of modularity to this is... it's intense. The only caveat is there is a limitation to the number of iterations you can run, and if you start changing all of this at once, you'll run out very quickly, which means you might need to run this a couple times if you have a lot of gear you want to mess with. We'll do a quick sim of what I would do the most patchwork style damage in. So we'll pick our Azerite traits we want to change, some trinkets I want to swap in, and a couple corruptions I'm interested in wearing. I already have a pretty good idea of what I want to wear, so I'll throw in a couple examples of things that I might be curious about. The best part of these types of simulations is it compares various combinations of gear and will show all of them in order of largest DPS gained to largest DPS lost. So you can choose if a certain talent, playstyle, or corruption is more enjoyable for you to use, and isn't a major DPS loss to do it. This is probably a lot of information to take in, so the easiest way to get into it is just to try it yourself, honestly. It might take you a little bit to get the hang of using it, as it can be a little overwhelming if you're not entirely sure what you're looking at, but it gets easier the more time you spend messing with it. 
that, and it's always rewarding to learn more about how your gear impacts your character and using that knowledge to your advantage. Anyways guys, sorry this one took a little longer than the usual videos. This one just needed a little bit more time to try and elaborate for people that haven't used simulation software before for their characters. It's honestly kind of crazy the lengths we go to to improve our game performance sometimes, isn't it? I don't know, I've personally always liked looking at the numbers and information, and I really feel like it's what gave me a lot of the insight or just the desire to learn more about the game that I have. So I figured I'd share that with you all. I hope you liked the video. If so, I have a bunch of other ones already on my channel. I do weekday uploads at 6 a.m. Pacific time and usually weekend uploads too. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.